Hello and welcome to the Pandemic Diary 2020. I'm your host, Jonah Chong. And for those of you who are viewing us for the first time, I'd like to say welcome. And for those of you who have been following us diligently Monday to Friday, I'd like to say thank you for supporting us and sharing the good news around that the show is up and running and we're having a wonderful time here today. Now, the Pandemic Diary is all about the lives of those affected whether good or bad, during the pandemic ep epidemic of COVID-19. And um, we like to hear their stories, and I'm sure you love to hear their stories, both locally and worldwide. Now, today we've got two amazing guests. But before we introduce you to our amazing guest, I'd like to introduce you to my wonderful co-host, Emily, who has been journeying. You know, we've been journeying to, for this show for the last three weeks, Emily. It's wonderful. It's been um, a bit of ups and downs, little, little clinks here we have to iron out. But we've been enjoying the journey with you, sharing the pandemic diaries of the stories of other our guests. Yeah, now, it's, um, been, it's been absolutely brilliant. And uh, we've yeah. had so many amazing guests. We've got two mm -hmm. more brilliant guests to finish the week and uh, oh, yeah. really looking forward to it today. We've got some exciting yeah. people to speak to. Yeah. And we've got the guy behind running the engines of the show hidden in the crevice of the screens and behind your screens is Mr. Monil Makal. Monil, I want you to say hello to the guests so that they know that you are there. Come on. We need to hear your voice, Monil. Say hi. Hello. Good morning. There you go. That's our producer and director of the show, Monil Makal. And now today, Emily, I don't know where to start. I'm so excited, but I think I'm going to pass the baton on to you and you get on with it and Thank tell them you're a wonderful guest today. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, join and sit in and enjoy the rest of the show with Emily and myself. So on this morning's show, we're going to be joined by Keith Mason. You can see him there. Good morning, Keith. And Keith is an ex-professional rugby league player. So this is big stuff. Keith has been playing or was playing for 14 years. And now he has found work in acting. So uh, it's been in a few films and TV series that we're going to delve into in a bit. Um, Keith's also got uh, his own comic book out as well, which is very exciting. And our second guest is Adam Richards. There's Adam. Hi, how are you? Very good, thank you, Adam. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you Amazing. all? Doing? Yes, we're good. We're very excited. So, um, Adam is a a stuntman, really, uh, I think, <laughs> and the director. Uh, he has the Never Give Up Phoenix production studios, so he's actually directing his own films as well as starring in other films and TV series. And going on Adam's website, you scroll down at the uh, filmography and you don't think it's going to end. So we've got a lot to talk about with Adam this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to be on the show. <laughs> so Adam, I'm going to start with you. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess really, uh, as, a, as a 90s child myself, I was really intrigued when I saw the Power Rangers uh, on your showreel, the red Power Ranger, the best one. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anybody else that, though. <laughs> My favourite was always the red one. Um, so I want to know how it got started, you know, how far was it into your career? There it is. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How far was it into your career um, that you actually started doing stunts for the, for this Red Power Ranger? Uh, it was I was seventeen when I actually got picked up to do stunts. So I was twenty three then when I got picked up. So it's like five years, yeah, five six years into my career. Oh wow! What was the what was the experience like doing such a, a big hit show like that? Um. We didn't know how big it was going to be. That was the biggest thing about it. We just didn't know how big the show was going to be. And we just sort of like got asked to do it from, because I was already involved with Hong Kong and that. And then I got approached to do um, the Power Rangers. So we just didn't know how big the show was going to be. And then over the years, it grew and grew, which is really good. Yeah, it certainly did. I think it's still going to stay, isn't it? They've had lots of different series. Yeah, it's still going today. They did a film last year, and there's talk of doing another film as well, Brilliant. where we may end up going back and doing some camera roles in it or something. 
Ah, oh, well, excellent. Um, so, <laughs> only 17 um, was your, did you say it was Hong Kong you, you visited? Yeah, I moved to Hong Kong at 17. You moved there? Yes. Oh, wow. And you met <laughs> the second plan, I believe? Um, I was training in a martial arts style called Wushu, and then I got picked up by, my instructor was in the films as well, and he took me along to Golden Harvest Studio because we went to Guaylo to do some stunt scenes and that, or fall into the water was the scene I did, or well, the first scene I did. Can I, I, can I, can yeah, I interject? But I like how you, on the Playing Gold Studios, that is a, the biggest film studio in the whole of Southern Asia, China. Yes. All the big karate movies, kung fu movies, martial arts movies came out of that studio. And you were working for one of the biggest studios in the whole of China. Yeah. And it's also, how did that happen? Uh, well, it happened by, um, like I said, me training with one of the Chinese masters who was already in the mm -hmm. films. And they wanted a young person, English person, to fall into the water. So they asked me if I would go along to the studio. I went along, opened the door. Jackie was standing there, which was a bit gobsmacked no, at that age. I, I, I gotta stop you there, Jackie. Who? Jackie Chan. <laughs> Jackie Chan himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was standing there, sort of like you know, just a great smile on his face, as he does. Um, and then he asked me to. He asked me if I could swim. I said yes, and he said. Well, Let's go for a walk. And we all had a walk down to the uh, har harbour. And mm -hmm. he said, that's where we would like you to fall into. Um, next minute, I sort of, he said, come closer, come closer. And he pushed me in. So <laughs> um, that was the start of my career, really. <laughs> that's such a good story. Um, Keith, is this something that you always wanted to do? Oh, sorry, Adam. Um. Yes, it's, it was something I always wanted to do. I sort of like brought up on films like uh, Dukes of Hazard and TV series Dukes of Hazard was like, you know, my favourite TV series. There was sort of thing, loads of stunts in here. The TV series called Full Guy as well, which is a bounty hunter who did stunts part time as well because he couldn't earn enough money doing stunts. Um, so he's a bounty hunter as well. So all these sort of things I was always, you know, doing sort of like crazy little things, sort of thing, riding BMX bikes, doing jumps, doing jumping through fire, doing all these sorts of different stunts I do. Yeah. Yeah, as you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear Keith? Is Keith, how did you start your career? Hi there, we didn't forget you, Keith. We did not forget you. We didn't stick you in the back burners. Tell us about your career. How you started your career in rugby? Hi there. Are you hearing us? When did you... hi? We can't hear you, Keith. Is your mic on on the phone? Your mic, your mic on the screen. Is it muted? I. Hello. I think you might have to take your hair and piece off because um, we're not hearing you. We are seeing you, but we're not hearing you. If you could detach your headphones from the um, your device. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you now. Yeah. Loud and clear. It was the headphones. Brilliant. So oh. I was asking you. So I'm a Jewish in diet. Wow. <laughs> How much calories do you put in a day, Keith? <laughs> Does someone want to say hi to us? Come hi, on, don't hi. shy. No, no, no. Come on. Someone is creeping. I'm hi, seeing a blue yeah. hand. Hi, darling. How are you doing? Thank you for joining I'm us. Okay. So we've gone on. We're going on this thing where um, uh -huh. a guy, he's, he's, what's his name? What's his full name? Skip. But he's called Skip, but he broke his back like Bruce uh -huh. did. And he was uh -huh. a gymnast. And he was told he would never, be a, would never do it again. And he, he ended up then recovering and healing himself and becoming one of the best UK gymnasts ever. So like, wow. so you say, you need to alkaline your body. So we're on this mm -hmm. juice. So yeah. I made it this morning. It's got an avocado, half a cucumber, lime, spinach, mm -hmm. kale, water, and, and an apple. Brilliant. It actually tastes very nice. <laughs> 
brilliant. Now, for those of you joining us, I think this is Keith's lovely wife. Say hi. Hi. But Keith, I'm going to pass the hymn now. I want to find out, Keith, when did you start playing rugby as a sport? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I had some, my mom introduced me to rugby league when I was around six years old. Uh, kid full of energy. And uh, I needed to be put into a spot to channel that energy. And uh, so from six years old, uh, right up to 16, uh, I played local rugby for amateur teams. And then I eventually got picked for Yorkshire, which is the county. Uh, then I got picked for England schoolboys. And then from England schoolboys, I got signed professionally at 17 by okay. Wakefield Trinity. Okay. Uh, played there for two years. I won uh, the Rising Star Award and I got uh, picked for Great Britain while I was there. And then uh, Melbourne Storm came in and offered me a deal at 19, uh, which made me the youngest ever English player to go to Australia. And uh, I made my debut, uh, I think it's a record, at just 19 years of age in the best competition in the world in Melbourne Storm. Uh, played two years at Melbourne, came back from Melbourne, then assigned for St. Helens which is the premier team in England. Uh, mm -hmm. I went on to win a Challenge Cup final in front of around 88,000 people at the Cardiff Stadium, Principality Stadium. Uh, we won the league the year after. I played three years at St. Helens and then I went to Huddersfield Giants, spent seven years there and two years at Castleford Tigers and I also played for my country. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful, Keith. That is really amazing. Um, but now I'm going to pull you in and say, when did you decide to do acting? So I played in a, in the Challenge Cup final in 2009 at Wembley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we lost. Uh, but you still was, got a um, a coach player of the year in that year, didn't you? Yeah. Even though they good. lost, you still won something, didn't you? Yeah, well, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's quite an award to win the best player mm -hmm. in the team. For that year, because that year was probably the best year Huddersfield Giants have had in a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I did get the coach of the award, which was a—it's quite an achievement uh, for, for my hard work. But mm -hmm. we played in the final in Wembley, uh, and unfortunately, we lost a game. Uh, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to win a game, uh, win a Challenge Cup final in 2004, and we just got invited to uh, a, a bar called Stringfellas. A few of the, mm -hmm. a few of the players. Okay. And I was in the you're bar. Celebrating or what? What were you all well, doing there? Just, celebrating well, or just de-stressing from the game? De-stressing, yeah. It would have been nice to win. Um, mm, yeah. Make history. Mm -hmm. But we went to Stringfellas and I remember being stood in Stringfellas and Mickey Rock literally walked past me. Uh, and I, I only just watched Mickey Rock in a film called The Wrestler, which was, it was like Mickey's comeback movie, right? But I thought, yes, it, was, I thought, I thought it was a movie, great yeah. film. Uh, very surprised. And I thought Mickey Rock was great in the film. So Mickey Rock walks past me and I said to my mate, well, that's a movie. That's, that's Mickey Rock, man. That's a movie star. And he was a bit younger than me, so he didn't, he didn't quite know. So I went over to his bodyguard, Derek, and I said, Derek, can, would it be okay if I say hello to Mickey? He goes, yeah, sure. So I went over to Mickey. said, hi, Mickey, nice to meet you. Shook his hand. He looked up at me and went, you a gangster, man? Are you an athlete? What are you, man? And because we had these grey suits on, we had his cup final suits on, uh, black shirt, black tie. You know, we look quite big. And yeah. I said, no, 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 I play rugby, Mickey. I play rugby. I played in the final today at Wembley. He goes, I think I watched that game today on, on, on the TV in my hotel room. He goes, I love rugby, man. And it just, from there, he gave me his number. He invited me to another bar uh, mm -hmm. where, he, where I'm wrestling some of the players. He literally snapped his bicep off the bone. If you ever see him, he has like a band on his arm, uh, mm -hmm. which was unfortunate for him. And uh, we just became friends. He, he invited me down to the GQ Awards two weeks later with him and Jason Statham. Mm -hmm. I know it as Mickey's guest. Uh, he won the Man of the Year. And then he flew me out mm -hmm. to New York, flew me out to Beverly Hills. Every time Mickey came to London, we'd, we'd go chill out and have a bite to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day he gave me a call and says, hey, Keith, do you want to be in a film? Do you want to play my henchman? And you've got lines. And I would just like, I'll play for Castleford. Uh, 
you know, it was quite a, it was quite name, a shock. What was the name of that film, Keith? What was the name of that film? That's you oh, there to the right skin of traffic. the screen. Skin, that, that's skin just a traffic. short film. Yeah. There you go. Keith, there you go. Yeah. Don't stop. Just keep on telling us about yourself. So, yeah, so basically, uh, I started in the film with Mickey, uh, played his henchman, mm -hmm. and yet you, you had actors like uh, Michael Madsen was in there, yeah. Daryl Lanner, uh, Alan Ford, who plays Bricktop, and Jeff Farhey. You had some uh, amazing actors uh, in that film. It just, it just gave me a new lease to life to give mm -hmm. me a vision for after sport because I wasn't sure what, what I wanted to do after sport and mm -hmm. being on there and, and, and having lines and, and doing all my scenes with Mickey, uh, mm -hmm. it just gave me a new vision and a new focus, yeah. a new drive. And I've been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think you retired at the age of 31 and most people, you know, it's kind of unheard of mm -hmm. someone retiring at 31, but in the world of athlete and sport, contact sport, there's a certain, um, you know, there's a certain span of, um, well, mm. there's a certain age group where things get cut off and according to injuries. Were you injured by any chance or anything like that when you stopped playing rugby? No, I just, I made the decision that I was going to retire. I was still in one piece. Uh, I played a lot of football, uh, 14 years, a long time. And for mm -hmm. me to go into the acting business, uh, I knew... I was still in one piece. So I was still in one piece and I needed to look the part. Uh, mm -hmm. So I made that bold decision. You know, I made that yeah. bold decision that I was going to retire, even though I had a two year contract on the table to sign. And I just, I just gambled on that decision. And obviously, you know, 10 films later and, and now producing my own film, Imperative, which is a British crime thriller, which comes out in October. Uh, mm -hmm. And also having the businesses I run and, and being able to write and, and creating Ruby Blood, I think it was the best decision I made. But it was difficult at first because it is for any mm -hmm. any sportsman to leave to leave a sport behind you've done all your life, mm -hmm. to 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 rededicate yourself and refocus and and and, and regalvanize yourself and throw yourself into something else is is a very rare thing to do. But I think the thing with me is that you know work very very hard. Uh, mm -hmm not just on the films or, or, or my businesses or rugby blood or anything else, but, you know, for me to provide for my family, uh, my partner's paralyzed. So I'm a full-time carer for my girl. Yes. Uh, what's most important to me is, is my family. Uh, yes. Films, acting, my career is secondary. My family is number one and uh, that's how it should be. And, yeah. you know, I've got six children and I'm here to inspire them kids to, to be the best versions of themselves. And, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very blessed and very lucky to be, be doing what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. for three years, I locked myself away. And now you're seeing Ruby Blood. You're seeing Imperative. You're seeing all the fruits of my labor uh, coming out. Yeah. Emily, what do you think about that story? You want to add yeah. to it, Emily? Yeah, it's just a, it's such a journey, isn't it? And such a such a change in in career. And um, I, I can't hear Emily. Wondering... Oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me, okay. Jane? I can hear Emily, but I think you can't. Keith cannot hear you. Okay, so no. I will continue. Keith, can you tell me about Rugby Blood? I'd like to. Oh, this is. Sorry, I'm going to have to ask you about the Imperative movie because I think this is snippets from Imperative movie. Tell us yes. what the story is about. So Imperative is, is uh, it's a British crime film. It's, it's based in the north of England. Uh, I play a detective called DCI Sullivan. He's a very dysfunctional guy. Uh, lost his wife and his, and, his, and his daughter were both murdered. So mm. he's a guy who doesn't trust anybody and he's on the hunt for a serial killer who's uh, murdering vigilantes. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. murdering rapists pedophiles not really good mm -hmm. people but he's still he's still a murderer so uh mm -hmm. it's about this guy's journey dci sullivan's journey of mm -hmm. him rising up and, and catching this killer and ultimately mm -hmm. it, it's this it's a very character based story about mm -hmm. a guy who's quite messed up but it, the his morals and his values are very very uh shaded, very shaded in, and great 
you know, his, 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 his morals are very right. He's a, he's a guy mm -hmm. who's very misunderstood. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a great film. It's my first film I've, I've produced and my first film I'm playing the lead. But it's a guy who's got a lot, a lot of depth to him and uh, he'll show people that I can actually act. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I'm so happy to hear that you're leading, you're the starring role in your own movie, <laughs> Imperative. And I, I suggest that everybody should be going out there in October post yeah. lockdown to go watch this movie but i also want to talk about blood rugby blood where did yeah. you come up with the idea of rugby blood so obviously i came what up, is rugby uh, blood speaking... first of all sorry blood. what is rugby blood what is rugby blood about so rugby blood was originally a film script which i'd written uh it was about a rugby guy a rugby star whose family gets uh, kidnapped by some russians and he has to hunt down these Russians to save his, his family. But the twist of it was that he was a rugby star. And obviously me being a rugby league player, uh, I just thought, you know what? I'll throw the Spanners in the work. It was my first script I'd written. I sent the script down to Pinewood Studios uh, through a friend. And Deborah Wooten looked at the script and she really liked it. And she invited me down to Pinewood. Now, for any anybody in general to visit Pinewood is is mind blowing, but for me being an extra rugby league player, then the next minute I'm at Pinewood Studios speaking to film producers, uh, looking at making the film, was amazing. And you know I met some really nice people down at Pinewood, and we spoke about a budget for the film, two to five million pound. But knowing the business, you know it takes a number of years for a film to be made. You know you have you need distribution, you need attached talent, you need producers you need a budget and i came away and i realized i did some research because i had an idea of doing a comic a graphic novel and i realized that there'd never been a graphic novel being done before about a rugby star and so i came up with an idea of an origins graphic novel now i reached out to a guy called paul roper who is uh an artist and he reached out to me and he said to me uh you know he really admired what i was doing Post football, post rugby, you know, there's not many sports people going and, and do what I do, especially rugby players, uh, with, with the producing and, and the acting and and, and uh, the, everything else I'm doing. So I said to Paul, "Listen, I've got an idea. I've got a story for you, Paul. If you can put this story, if you can put pictures to this story, it's going to be massive. Trust me, because this was my vision. My vision was for it to be a franchise, for it to be a film, a TV series, an anime." And now, yes. and now I've got my own sports line, clothing line. Yeah, uh, this is what I was going to come up and see. This yeah, rugby so, blood. So rugby yeah. blood, we did the story. Uh, I contacted Super League, which is the Bedford Super League, which is the biggest di uh, division in, in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to Robert Elston and I said, listen, Rob, would you like to endorse uh, rugby blood? It features some of the best players in the world. It's mm -hmm. got actually... 40 international rugby league players in there. We also have Adam Mills, who's the comedian on Last Leg. He's also featured in there as a comic character. We've got Joe Calzaghi in there, who's the Hall of Fame boxer, who's a friend of mine who's going to feature in there as a, as a character. And some of the biggest stars in the world. Uh, so I did the deal with Super League. Super League decided to endorse it, which is the first in history. Uh, next sportsman going back to a sports organisation and them endorsing the comic. Uh, my vision was to do a film, to do an anime, which we're all in the works right now. Uh, so Super League endorsed it. It came out uh, last April. Uh, we've had thousands of sales, really good sales. And we're in the process of, of, of creating the second one now, which is called Shot Clock, uh, which we're, we're based in, in New York. Uh, and the story is about a guy that never gives in, uh, David King. The actual story is My Childhood. So it shows you a young David King. So we decided, because of my background and being in so much trouble as a kid, uh, going to court 45 times as a, as a young kid, uh, being on the wrong side of the tracks, not having a father figure about, and then turning my life around and becoming an international rugby player is like, uh, you know, it's a fairy tale. But it's all come from a lot, a lot of hard work and adversity. And the story behind Rugby Blood is about a guy who never gives in, who perseveres and who has true grit. And kids need to see that. And, you know, it's, it's growing now. And 
Uh, O'Neill Sports, who's the biggest sporting brand in Ireland, who who, endor- who, who sponsors some of the biggest sport clubs in the world, uh, mm-hmm. approached me and said, look, Keith, we're really interested. We love the story about Rugby Club. We're really interested in doing bespoke playing jerseys, kits. Uh, could you come to the to the uh, organisation and meet us there? So I did, sat down with a guy called Neil Williams and Dave Larder, and uh, we decided that we were going to do a whole sports range of Rugby Club. They loved the idea of it. And uh, so it, we, we launched the, the sports range about four weeks ago, which is Keith Mason's Rugby Blood. So we've gone from a graphic novel to now having a sport, sport in line. Uh, and we're also looking at doing a sports documentary for Netflix uh, with a guy called Moz D who wants to do the sports documentary about my journey from life after rugby, how mm-hmm. I created Rugby Blood. And then the other part of the documentary will be me traveling all, all over the world interviewing sports stars about how they have coped with life after sport. So basically Mm -hmm. about mental health. Because, you know, I went through my struggles when I retired and I rededicated myself, recreated myself, and I showed people I'm not just a rugby player, I've got brains. So, uh, yeah. yeah. But but you also wanted also to inspire children. Absolutely, yeah, that's what it's all about. Children, most of all, with the um, design of Rugby Blood and everything, the comic hero mixed in into your life, your struggles, and you yeah. are rising like a phoenix. You're like rising like a phoenix. And um, I'd like to invite Adam, the rising phoenix, back into our chat. Hello. Hi. Adam, tell us about the rising phoenix. Uh, Rising Phoenix is um, a superhero film which I've written as well um, okay. and it's all about a young couple out on a date and then as they're walking back a gang of thugs uh, follow them and the gang of thugs is trying to mug them, the, the young gentleman pushes the girl to run away they start beating the gentleman up, He they kill him then they set fire to him and then from there, as they're walking away to try and attack the girl, you see the phoenix rising from the ashes. Mm-hmm. This is where wow. you'll see a fight scene of him on fire and fighting the thugs. And this mm-hmm. is the start of the film. Okay. It sounds very powerful, very impacting imagery you've just portrayed to us. Um, tell us about um, your career as a stunt person. You told us earlier on and um, your career started off actually as acting being thrown into the, the deep end literally yeah. and then coming into your own as a stunt person working on various projects now we are in the COVID-19 lockdown period and I'd like to ask you how does this impact on your life your career and your business uh, everything has really been put on hold as we all know um, but I did manage to make a film uh, Why we was on lockdown, still managed to do a film uh, with a film director from Steve Bond from America. We created this whole film. We're using Zoom and filming stuff from home. Um, all about film directors who are wanting to make a film, and then, you know, um, I play one of the lead roles acting in that film. Uh, but it was very hard because we couldn't go out and film much outside because of the lockdown every time you take a camera out or go out the police where I, where I am the police are on to us sort of thing asking us what we're doing and where we're going mm-hmm. um so yeah so we had difficult so it was all filmed from home uh, this one film we just did so but it gave me time to uh work a bit more on some film scripts my blind date film which i'm working on my catwalk warrior film which is a couple of films which i'm writing um so it just gave me more time to do that and so basically the, you've been reflecting creating ideas perfecting yeah. ideas while during the lockdown um yes. what do you see what do you how how are you going to be um transitioning from the lockdown period what are your future hopes as it were um, well we're hoping like this year like we already did uh three we've done three films this year already um, I did throw myself, after my mum passed away in December, I really did throw myself away into filming and trying to work a lot. Um, but then, you know, then this has all happened now, so it's, I've had to keep myself busy, but it's also gave me too much time thinking as well. So, 
Yeah, I hear you. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I remember the passing of your mom and I sending you condolences. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know like, what it is to, to lose parents. I, I'm an orphan at the moment at the time. I've lost yeah. both my parents. Yeah, I've, I've lost both of the natural things. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's hard. Yeah. So it's a reflection time of reflection, and it's also a new rebirth for you. Yeah. Your career, yourself, you know, everything is just that was holding back or, you know, is there anything that's going to hold you back now that you're, you're bursting into this new era as a phoenix in your own life, actually? You're like yeah. a symbol of a phoenix yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is. Yes, yeah, it is a reborn in sort of thing, and like restarting my life sort of thing. Um, I'm hoping that nothing will hold me back. Um, we're sort of constantly speaking to people in India and Dubai um, about financing some of my films. Um, so they're looking to put them. Dubai, they're on about putting five million into a film. Um, they are. They're wanting like some big stars, which I said to them they won't get the big stars for that sort of money. So, you know. Um, that would just pay for a film, but if you want a big star, you're looking at a lot more money. Mm -hmm. Emily, Emily, yeah. you know, we could hire ourselves to Adam, Emily. Yeah. Just a little hint, Emily. Just <laughs> a little hint there. We could, you know, we are, I'm available. Emily, Emily, come on, do your thing. Well, you know, I, I've just been looking on your, your website, Adam. It's, it mentions a uh, TV presenters, actors. Well, I'm a little bit of both, so you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But me and Jane will be, be very happy if, if yeah, you need have any, to, any support. I'm going to point my finger at Emily. I decide, I'm going to decide, okay, I'll just do this. <laughs> um, but Adam, when we go to your website, so never give up dash phoenix dot productions, uh, I think I got that right. What what are we going to see on there? What services do you offer? What's it all about? Um, um, uh, what we do is we offer services where if people want to hire people or camera equipment or anything they need, then we'll put your name forward for any projects what we're doing. Um, any projects we're doing, but I also get approached by like Hollywood sometimes for by casting directors, by other people, um, and we always have a list of people we put forward for films and that all the time. Um, but we we got access to camera equipment as well. Um, we've got our own Black Magic camera. We've got our own lighting equipment. So anything we've got, and we've got some great line producers as well, and they sometimes ask me for things as well. Mm. So basically, you hire a whole package service. Yeah. From scratch to finish. That's wonderful to know. And people could go at um, the website of Adams and um, they could just browse or they could approach you via that website. Yeah. What's the name of your website again, um, Adam? Uh, Never Give Up Phoenix Productions. Yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> can, I, can I ask you something? Yeah. What are you gonna do with yourself for the rest of the week after you come off the show? What do you uh, do with your, What do you plan to do this weekend? Okay, what are you this weekend. Do? Um, well, I'll probably carry on writing. Uh, the film I'm working on mainly at the moment is Blind Date, which I'm working on that one at the moment. It is about human trafficking, so I'm mainly sort of adding some more scenes into that film because mm -hmm. that's the one which I'm sort of preparing to make next. Okay. Yeah, it was about, it's all about human trafficking, that film is, and um, about it's about a group of models will go missing, and a group of uh, girls go on a dating app, and they go missing as well. Mm -hmm. so, it's very important. It's very topical, because um, with us being on lockdown, a lot of us are communicating via the internet, and we, we're using devices to communicate with each other. And yeah. some people are building friendships, virtual friendships, virtual relationships as well yeah. and some people uh you know the catfish scenario where they're projecting to themselves to be something else that they're not and so that film is something based on those lines they're roping in the candidates or something like that i know i should you can't throw the beans on the production but i'm just guessing and putting it out there to the universe you know yeah you don't know like you know the film is all about a um it's called blind dates because when you go on these dating apps you don't know who you're actually going to meet 
Mm -hmm. So you go on a date, you don't know who the person's real, you don't know how, you know, it could be a fake photo, you don't know. Yeah. Um, so this film I, I, you know, I've written, it starts off where um, the first lot of people go missing is actually a group of models where they go on a, um, which I've heard of many times, of models applying for different um, castings. They turn up and then they go on a job to Spain or somewhere, paid a lot of money. And most of the girls only look at what the pan sign says. But they don't look at what the work experience the person's got. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, you know, so I've added this into the film as well, where a group of models actually all go on a, um, a casting, and, but they all do a photo shoot, but all these girls disappear. Mm. Yeah, and this wow. is a very real uh, subject as well. It's something that yeah. I've seen myself being a model. Um, we only very recently had to send out a big sort of broadcast warning people about someone who was clearly, uh, they'd taken over like one of our friends' Facebook uh, pages mm -hmm. and were pretending to be someone else and trying to lure people in with the big dollar signs saying, you know, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a scary world. So I think it is really important that, it's highlighted and even though your film is going to be entertaining it's going to be high octane isn't it but it's a really important subject as well to highlight mm -hmm. because the human trafficking brings in a lot of money for these predators out there and um, there's a lot of talks with people going missing you know like people who are tied to charities those are oh we we've got someone here adam there's yeah. someone on the screen carol Carol says Adam has some fantastic ideas and I'm excited to see where his new film goes. Well done to him. Yes. Yeah. Excited to see where his new film goes. Well done to him. Thank you very much. And we had a little pop up from Samuel mm -hmm. saying hi to Emily and myself and hi to Monu. Hi, Samuel. Hello, Carol. Thank you for dropping in. You could keep the comments going. If anybody wants to ask questions to any one of us on the show here today, you could do so now. We will um, put you on to whoever you'd like to speak to. So, you know, this is such a point in um, topic, human trafficking. People don't like, they don't like talking about it because it's, it's, it's too, what should I put it? It scares the daylights out of me because it's something that I've dated someone, I remember from, or, you know, meeting someone online. The date went fine. And I remember going on a date with another person who I happened to meet on social media, but I made sure it was in the broad daylight. And that person turned out to be, oh my God, I had to disappear on the guy. I'm serious. We, he took me to a club and I'm like, I, I, I never said I like this kind of atmosphere where he took me to. Not that, you know, I'm this in clubs, but the atmosphere, I, I'm not into this, the particular place atmosphere. I didn't feel comfortable there. And then tried to give me a drink with a whole bunch of people in the crowd. I've said to myself, you know what? I didn't see this drink be brought to me. I don't know what you've done. Oh, hell no. And I just excused myself, went to the ladies' room, and I got the hell out of there. When he called me, I was having a shower. I'm at home, safe in my house. That's what I did. I just wasn't comfortable, and I disappeared. I excused myself, and I went into the bathroom. And I ran straight out of that club. Mm, it's a yeah. scary world out there. Yeah, it's it scary. Um... You know, some of them, some of them, and the guy was like an octopus. I didn't know he had so many hands. It's like, whoa, what's going on? I don't know you. What if I've got something? What if you've got something? Are you crazy? You can't be getting on like that. We've got another person saying hello, Sergi, saying hello. Now, um, we're coming off from a very dark topic here. That's sort of like spooking us out a bit. Um, Keith, what have you got to say? You know, I'd, I'd like you to talk about what you're going to be doing in the future after these projects. Any little hints you want to give us? Anything that we need to look forward to coming from you uh, and your production side? Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, we've I've got a CBD company called Project Mason. Uh, mm -hmm. I endorse some of the biggest athletes in Super League. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a CBD brand, which we do uh, protein shakes, uh, an alkalized water. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi. Oh, 
I'm just gonna tie the laces. Wait a second. He has to tie the laces, folks. Daddy okay. Jewish. He's doing du daddy duty. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> He's doing his daddy duty. So we're gonna be patient and wait for him. It's a triple knot here. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, Hello cutie. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ah. There you go. So this is what Keith Mason does on a Friday, helping out his little daughter. Yeah, so sorry, guys. Places. That's okay. That's what's wonderful to see. I enjoyed that. I used to terrorize my dad. I was a daddy's girl. So, hey, well, your time now. Tell us. Yeah, which so I've got, I got a CBD company called Project Mason. We've got our alkalized water, which is there's not many uh, about. Uh, distilled alkalized water, which helps, we enables with uh, anxiety, depression. Uh, we endorse some of the top athletes from Super League. We've got the protein shakes. Uh, we got the protein bars, CBD protein bars, uh, CBD oils, CBD roll-ons. Uh, and it's a business me and my friends set up. Because of the coronavirus, uh, most of our stuff will come from China, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So as soon as a lockdown's over, we're going to launch that. We're going to have a launch party for the CBD brand, which is Project Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to get it out there to, to the athletes, and it's going to be uh, saleable worldwide. Uh, I've also got Ruby Blood, uh, the second edition, Shot Clock, a graphic novel, which will be coming out probably around August time. Same again uh, with, the, with the pandemic. Everything slowed right down. Uh, Imperative, just about finished it. Uh, we're distributing that to America and Indonesia and Europe. Uh, I'm co-producing it. Well, self-produced the film, but I'm co-produced it with a guy called Dijon Shen, who's uh, going to be producing, producing one of the other films I'm working with, Jason Cook uh, in Cookster. Uh, so, yeah, I'm quite busy, guys. You know, But right now, you know, I've got six kids. Uh, my son is uh, a tremendous rugby league player. Uh, he's only 14 and uh, I'm training him and my stepson at the minute uh, so when the pandemic's over he will be signing for a, either Wigan Warriors or, or Leeds Rhinos uh, so yeah I'm quite busy guys obviously I launched my own sporting brand uh, at O'Neill's uh, Keith Mason's Rugby Blood which is fantastic uh, you know the, 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 the merchandise is amazing and uh, like I said, we're going to be going to be quite busy. But you know, the film comes out in October. We're looking at a worldwide worldwide release, and uh, it should be fun. You know, people enjoy a good British crime thriller, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be good. Uh, with the clips we've been putting out there, we've had a lot of good responses from people, and they're looking forward to seeing it. So that and helping my missus walk, and uh, you know, being a dad at home, and and and. You know, doing that's my number one priority right now is is being a father. All mm -hmm. the other things are going to happen anyway. But mm -hmm. you know, seeing my partner walk and seeing my kids happy, uh, being a positive positive influence to my children right now is the most important thing for me. Uh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I like you use the shutdown time, the lockdown time to bond, make stronger bonds with your family. Let the business do what it has to do, but you stay there and you're just with the family and supporting and being a wonderful father and a wonderful partner to your partner. I'm so happy to see this. And guys, you heard this first on the Pandemic Diary 2020. We're going to be watching Keith Mason very closely for the release of the, his new movie coming out worldwide, hopefully in October. Um, is there any way people could purchase your brand, like the O'Neills and, you know, the, the clothing line, any size that they could go to to yeah. keep a well, all, all, the, all the links are on my social medias. Mm -hmm. But if you go, if you just put into Google, uh, if you put uh, O'Neills Sports or put mm -hmm. Keith Mason's Rubby Blood, it will come up with the actual merchandise and the clothing. Uh, okay. If you're looking to get the graphic novel, uh, same again, if you put it into Amazon, Ruby Blood, it'll come at the top. Uh, Ruby, the graphic novel will come at the top. And then obviously Project Mason will be linked to my, uh, will be linked to all my social medias. So it's all about, you know, everything I'm doing is about giving back and helping people. Uh, you know, I, I think one of my superpowers is that I seem to bring the best out in people. And, 
you know, seeing my, my partner go through two strokes, a spinal stroke and uh, going through another stroke and then having to get back to normal again, all the work we did over the years and the lost. And two years ago, she suffered a second stroke and then we had to build herself back up again. But I think being with, with Riona has really uh, took me to another level because I look at a lady every day who gets up and looks after a family of six, who cooks for us, who gets after it. And I look at myself and think, what's my excuse? And, and I think that one of the main reasons why I've gone and done what I've done post-football is because of my partner and her struggles. And your struggles develop your strengths and stones make you stronger. You know, life's about being happy. It's about being happy with yourself, you know, and obviously everything else I'm doing is just a byproduct of, of the hard work. But ultimately, I'm a very, very lucky man to have uh, the people in my life who I've got, and that's family. And what's most important is family, whether it's blood or not. Uh, you know, whether you're wanting to make a team or build a business, you have got to have people in that business around you who believe in your vision and you believe in them. Uh, you know, so, you know, life's about reaching out to people who are, who are on a similar, similar road to you, or ambitious, or people who uh, go against the grain, or, or, or dream chasers, uh, because we've got one shot of this life, one shot, and that's it. Uh, so let's make it good. But the thing is, you've got to work your backside off to, to achieve anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Would you like to add anything in closing? Me? Yeah, anything in closing. Yeah, I just say, obviously, through this time, uh, I think you've shown people this COVID-19 is how important we are as, as a society, how we should treat each other. I think now you've seen people be nice to each other. And uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a time of reflection and how to uh, better ourselves. You know, I've, I've, I've actually met some goals through this last seven weeks of how I can improve as a person, as a human being, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, me and my partner have made massive strides uh, with people reaching out to us, sending us neuro tech equipment, which will help Riona walk properly. And it has been a, a, a time of reflection, but you've got to understand this. We're all in this together. Mm. You know, each and every one of us are in this together and we're going to come out of this storm stronger. Uh, you know, we're used to, me and my partner are used to going through storms. You know, I have to keep an eye on her because she can, she can any time have a stroke. Uh, mm. And I think in life, you know, you need to fight. You need to fight every single day for what you believe in. And, uh, but put yourself in the best position. For me, I look after myself. I'm, I'm pretty much training all the time in the gym, martial arts, uh, stretching, yoga. I do, every, I, I do a lot of things to, to help with my mental health. Because like anything, mental health, you have to work on it. You have to get out and go for a walk. And you, you have to take care of yourself. You have to eat good food. There's so many elements to, to, to what you need to be, is to be a, a fulfilled person, a good person, and, and, and a mentally, health, a mentally health, healthy person. And I think through this pandemic, a lot of people are going to struggle because a lot of people are used to going out and being busybodies and, and being around people. So this is a really testing time. And I think, you know, I think the suicide rate would probably have gone up uh, with this lockdown. Uh, but I think with the stuff that we put out there, me and Riona, and all the messages I put out from my social media is to inspire people, you know, to pay it forward. It ain't about me. It's about what I've got. Yeah, that's great. But it's not about what I can gain. It's about how I can inspire the next generation, inspire the next, the next child to want to wanna chase after greatness. Because after 45 court appearances and 60 arrests from the ages of 11 to 14, and to do what I've done after that uh, is amazing. And I think my biggest uh, achievement in life was turning my life around at 14 and uh, mm -hmm. deciding that I wanted to be a superstar rugby player and, uh, you know, do what I'm doing now. But ultimately, as you get older, you realise that family is more important than anything else. So very true. Uh, we got a little note here from Sam asking, Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. I do scoring for films. Would you have need for a composer? Someone has just um, asked Adam a question. Thank you so much. Um, Adam? Hello, Adam. Can you hear me? 
Mike was on mute, I think. The question is for you. Hi, Adam. I do scoring for, for films. Would you have need for a composer? Uh, sometimes we need need for a composer. I do use. I've got a really good friend in America, Doc Myers, who does a lot of my composing for my films. But I will look at other people as well. So if they send me a message or email me um, through my uh, website, then we we'll talk that way. Mm. Yeah, definitely check out Samuel Archer, Adam. He's a he's a big name. Okay. <laughs> So, Adam, do you have any uh, final comments that you want to leave with us and our amazing viewers before we close out today's show? Um, well, as you know, like I've got a big martial art background as well. Sort of like my history of martial arts is like from being British champion in Thai boxing, kickboxing, and uh, wushu. Um, but I've got seven black belts. But a lot of people have been asking me training tips and that, and I'm trying to encourage people to do some training. Some a lot of people are suffering with mental health. I'm trying to get them to do some training um, to just try and uh, release dolphins into their brain to try and help them uh, feel better about themselves because we're locked down at the moment. A lot of people are not doing anything at all, but just a little bit of exercise can help them. Um, so I have been putting training tips up as well on my Facebook to try and encourage people. And I know that there's some people which have been doing the training tips and they you know, started off with like doing like 10 press-ups, now they're doing like 50 press-ups. Um, so I know even like Philip Chan, you know, a good friend of mine, um, he was struggling, but now he's up to, I think he's up to like 100 press-ups a day again, you know, which he's a fair few, man. He's been on, you know, a couple of my film sets. He's an amazing guy. Um, great friend. Yeah, so just trying yeah. to encourage everyone to try and keep fit and keep yourself going sort of thing. And, you know, I struggled sort of with a back injury, as Keith knows as well that, you know, I actually – damaged my spinal cord at one stage. Um, I was in a walking, I was on walking sticks and wheelchairs. Um, but I've, you know, strengthened it up and still going. Um, and that's where Never Give Up come from. Mm -hmm. Literally, the whole name Never Give Up was actually from my injury. Mm -hmm. uh, Never Give Up. Yeah. yeah, and it's an important message as well about, um, as you've both said, Keith and Adam, about exercising. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything really strenuous, but it is really important to do a little bit because it releases those chemicals, you know, and it's not something we can argue with. You just feel better after doing some exercise. And I've been trying to do a little bit of jogging, haven't I, Joan, every day? Yes, you have. <laughs> it's been good. I've been, it's been good. Doing, I've been doing a bit of walking. Yeah. But you do need to keep the endorphins up. Do some sport. The government says, okay, we're on lockdown. You've got to social isolate. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. Some people wear the masks or scarves around their face to block pollen. You know, keep themselves from, well, avoid getting infected by anything nasty out there. But at the same time, you still need to keep going. And the message is, you know, despite the situations, whatever situations we all face with, we need to keep going because there's a brighter future. You just have to live it now to get a yeah. brighter future today. We also like to thank our support that we've been receiving. One of our number one fans is actually Mr. Philip Chan, and I'd like to take this time to thank Philip Chan for all the support he's given the show. I'd like to thank our guests. I'd like to thank my host, Emily Blake, Emily, you want to close this off? I'm gonna give pass the baton back on to you. And, you, know, you gotta, you gotta say it today. You gotta say it today. Oh, it's just been brilliant. I mean, we've heard really great stories about our guest journeys and the motivational messages as well. Absolutely brilliant. You know, uh, really Adam's ethos is never give up. That's the website name. And Keith is just really motivational, inspirational and telling us that we're all going to get through this stronger. And, you know, I think we've heard some really great tips along the way as well. So really grateful to our guests today. I'd like to say a big, big thank you for joining us on our final show of the week on the Pandemic Diaries. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Big thank you to you, our wonderful, wonderful thank audience. Thank Thanks for so your much. comments. Thank you for liking thank you guys. Thank you. And we'll see you on the other side. Thank you, Keith. Thank yeah. you, Adam. You are fantastic. Thank you, Jonah Chong, my thank wonderful co-host. 
and Adam, and be safe, everybody. Be safe. Thank Thanks you. Strong. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.